Welcome, now with my microphone on, it's much better, <laughs> welcome to the first Café Release of 2021 and we're starting not only a year but a series of episodes dedicated to a convention but you will find an online convention so no matter where you are in the world you can take part to this. But I've got two people to tell about that convention and more stuff happening in the little corner of the world. Uh, Rachel and Sin, could you, maybe Rachel first, could you introduce yourself to our viewers, please? Uh, sure. So um, I'm Rachel Deng, and I'm from the Philippines. So I'm part of this group called Gamers and Gaming Youths, so G&G &G for short. And we're running a convention on January 30 called Session Zero Online that is to, you know, advertise, show off, promote RPGC, Asian, and Asian diaspora creators. So it's not our first event, but it's our first online event. So traditionally, we used to do, um, well, we still are supposed to be doing um, small RPG related events in the Philippines. So we've done things like um, charity events, we've done mega games, We've done a bunch of experiments with um, d and all indie events, and so on and so forth. And our first session zero was actually in 2019. I was about to say last year, but it wasn't last year anymore, was it? Yeah, time <laughs> so flies. that one, um, yeah. So that one we had, um, it was mostly Filipino, um, Filipino designers because of, you know, the locale and everything. But this year we're branching out, hopefully because of the online thing. But yeah, so generally that's that's mostly what I do for the RPG scene. I run events, so I don't I don't game design or anything like that. Well, that's already a lot of, a lot of work. Uh, what about you, Sina? Um, hi. Uh, I am. Uh, I'm also part of GNG. Um, what I do for GNG is more towards the social media stuff. So I make all of the posts and and. And um, along with Phil, and um, it's been really fun so far. Uh, I've been with GNG for a few years now, so um, I'm very excited for the the online version of Session Zero. Uh, I've only really attended one online convention, so that's the extent of my experience. <laughs> so I hope that um, with everybody's help in the group we can make this a successful one. Excellent. Um, I got a couple ice breaking questions because Cafe Rollist is a spin-off show which was born out of the, the different lockdowns uh, we are going through. Uh, Rachel, what does your routine like uh, looks like at the moment? Um, like gaming-wise or like generally everything? In general, and was it impacted in any way by, uh, by lockdowns and so on? Uh? I was already doing work from home before the lockdown, so transitioning to that wasn't difficult. Although we did get a lot more work at, in the office in my day job um, this year because of the lockdown. You know, everyone's working from home, which means you know you don't you don't work where you live; you live where you work, right? So people have been like working longer hours and so on. So that's kept me very busy. Um, normally in the week, I used to play maybe four to five RPGs in person with friends. But now we've moved everything online. So my RPG life is still quite colorful. I still play a lot, uh, but only one is in person now because I'm playing with my neighbors as well. And then what else do I do in my day? I cook a lot, I guess, because I have to feed you know, people and myself. I do like eating a lot. So I've been experimenting with a lot of food this year. Mostly because, you know, neighbors have been bringing in quite un, like unusual ingredients. So I've been trying it out. Oh, what about you, since? Was... Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Rachel. No, no, it's okay. <laughs> um, for me, uh, the daily routine before was uh, I used to have an office job. Um, but this year, or rather 2020, has kind of become a thing where... I went full throttle into freelancing and game design. Um, 
I left my my job at the very beginning of of lockdown because uh, things got too hectic and I couldn't really stay there anymore. Um, so I went full into into game design and I've been hired for a lot of uh, projects. Um, I think the most recent one is uh, I got hired to do layout for Gun and Slinger. So that was really cool. Um, the style is like crazy. I've never done anything like that before. Uh, but I really hope that people like it. It's very... Uh, I guess gritty and like uh, grungy sort of style. It's got like you know splashes and and very graphic stuff. Um, so I hope that like my work um, did well for that. Um, my my routine is really. I wake up really late these days. <laughs> I'm not a morning person anymore. Lucky you. Me neither. I... But I got a toddler, so I don't have a choice. <laughs> yeah. Ending that. Yeah. I I feel you, but like uh, I used to, I used to wake up really early, like at around six or seven because of the day job. Uh, but That's ever since early. I started freelancing, yeah, after when I started freelancing, I started waking up at around ten, eleven, noon. <laughs> but that's Is that also... late for you? <laughs> yeah, it's super late for me. <laughs> yeah. And, and then, in mid shift, um, so I wake up at ten every day anyway. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. But then um, the main reason for that these days is because this cat over <laughs> here has been keeping us awake during the night. Uh, oh. He's been super disruptive and like, because he's a kitten. So there you go. Uh, so nighttime is trying my best to get the cat to sleep. And then morning is sleep. And then afternoon is work. <laughs> Yeah, we are usually woke up at least once, that's for sure, uh, when our son joins us in, in bed. And he's, he's, he's not a quiet sleeper, so our sleep goes uh, quite poorly, especially me being kicked in the face. Uh, <laughs> but uh, oh, some nights no. he, he will wake up twice, and usually uh, at, uh, at uh, if we're lucky, 7.30, uh, we, we wake up, usually more 6.30. But... Uh, so we're a bit tired, and while uh, I totally support if the nursery needs to close, I'm very happy that they're not supposed to tomorrow. <laughs> and I would really hope they remain open for myself and my wife. But okay. <laughs> let's come back to session zero. Uh, how many editions of session zero? So it's the first one online, but there's been previous editions still of session zero. Just one. Uh, Just yes. one. We've had one yes um because prior to that we were doing a lot of different events um yeah. like we had the keep rolling series where yes. you know in january we would run all of the games that we liked that were from the previous year that was released the previous year so we'd have like 10 to 12 tables of that and then we had the gaming for goodness series where it was a charity event for various organizations that we could think of like once a year and so on and then we'd had all of the mega game ones and then we had the murder mystery ones at some point and then we had lacuna yeah october fest we had the um, lacuna which was a collaboration with um play without apology which is i think you're familiar with it because of pam so that's the event we have where all of the GMs that run the games are all women or LGBT and so on. So we, we had a lot of series of events like that. And then we started the session zero one in 2019. So before, prior to that point, we, we kept on thinking, do you think we'll have enough indie designers in the Philippines to populate an event like that? Like, would we have enough people, you know, having tables and so on? Would we have enough artists interested in doing art for RPGs and whatnot? And then we decided 2019, yeah, let's do it. Why not? So we had about 35 tables and a pretty good number of attendees. We hit about 200 people back then. So um, it, it seemed really nice and people were very excited for 2020. So we were planning on flying in people from the Southeast Asian community and so on. Big venue so, and everything. So that should have been session zero two, 2020. Yeah. 
It was such a nice number, you know, 2020. <laughs> Yeah, it was it was gonna be at this this huge venue. Like, uh, I remember Rachel and I were looking at the place, and we were like, oh, "Imagine yeah. uh, the arrangement of everything, the tables, and then it even has like this elevated kind of platform Mode, right? stage." Like yeah, thing. yeah. So we could we could have like the the raffles there, so that people wouldn't have to be straining from all the way in the back of the <laughs> of the event area. And... Yeah, but the lockdown here has extended since March. It's still going until now. Still so going. no one can really do any events right now, which is, I mean, you know, um, it's understandable. For the better. It's, it's for the better. So um, so we decided, let's do session zero again, but online. But we weren't going to settle for an event where people couldn't see each other or didn't have that sort of physical physical interaction as um, our previous events. So we we delayed a lot to look around for tools that we could use for that sort of thing. I'm very uh, excited it was Rames, about right during yeah, yeah it, it, I think it was Rames during one of your uh, Band of Blades games or a meeting that yeah, suddenly was like, like guys. Yeah we have we have this member who is really good at throwing innovative ideas at us so you know usually i will look at what he puts out and then i'll say yeah we can do this and then it happens but he he's really good at giving ideas like that so he was the one who pointed this out to gather down which is where session zero 2021 will happen i'm gonna show it uh it's gonna be a bit uh trash because i, I didn't I have the opportunity to prepare in advance, okay. but you did send me a, a picture and I'm very excited about that bit because I've been to several online conventions and the interface is one of the points which are, are still uh, not, you know, there, there's room for, okay, there you go, there, there's room for improvement. So the idea of having an interface like that for the convention, I find it uh, very exciting. So, uh, yeah, you, you get, the two of you cannot see it, but I'm showing uh, the picture you sent me. Uh, so, first of all, uh, I hope there will be more people at Z Session Zero Count because what I see in the screen, there's only Rachel. So, uh, I guess there will be <laughs> yeah. more individual. But uh, can you explain how it works and uh, what it was? I mean, it, that's what you were about to do, I guess. But... Yeah. So, Gathered Out is this virtual tool that gives you like a, an 8 bit map, like Pokemon or one of those classic games and you get a little sprite that's you and you walk around and you know you hit the wall you go to tables and you can interact with them because like as a map maker i can embed the links into the tables and so on so we have an artist making a map right now um the one that i sent you is a sample of uh, an event that we ran in October just to test out if the, the tool would work for us. So we had about 25 people in there. And it was really yeah. fun because it surprisingly really gave the that feeling of being in a physical convention. You know, you're sitting at the couch and further in the distance, you can see like a bunch of people playing around the table. And then if you want to eavesdrop on what they're doing, you just walk closer and you'll be thrown into a conference call with them. So it's like this, right? We'll, we have like a, a camera and the mic and we'll hear each other and we see each other. So with, with Gather, it's based on your proximity to someone else's sprite. Which so you can if, even, uh, you yeah. can even uh, customize it. So you can... You can see people up to like just two squares around you, and and they can even go bigger, which is nice if you're if you want to only just be like confined to a smaller space so that you're not overwhelmed by everybody talking at the same time. So, for example, if you had a booth in session zero, and I walk my sprite over to your booth, so I can talk to you, and I can also look at the stuff on your table, which is whatever link you put on there that I'll put on it for you. So it's quite good because then people can um, explore each other's stuff and then also talk about the stuff while looking at it at the same time. Yeah. And I... then we'll also have game tables, so that's pretty good. Yeah, it's it's really cool. I, I heard some people are trying to do LARPs with the, such tools now, uh, online LARPs. But they, we, 
people don't realize okay so people can mark their bingo card i'm gonna i'm about to say because i'm an architect uh, <laughs> but you know when you're in a office space uh maybe people realize it a bit more but uh, now with working from home but there's a lot of spaces which are not work spaces but are important for a business or an event to work because you happen to randomly run into people and that gives you those five ten minutes of intimate unscheduled conversation that you couldn't have somewhere else because you you run into someone into a, a corridor uh oh odd How did the, the design of the map go? Because, again, as an architect, I can imagine where you locate things. Since it's virtual, you can do whatever you want, but at the same time, you still have constraints. You want to keep things apart or close to each other. Uh, what are the sort of thinking that's happening so, right now? Because I designed, the, I designed the map on the back end using Google Sheets. So it's just like a lot of blocks and pixels that I'm feeding into my um, artist. So Stacy, if you're listening, thank you so much for working hard on this. Um, so how I've designed it so far is to have different rooms. So uh, our room will be like all the boots, half the boots will be there and another room will have half the other boots. There will be a lounge, an auditorium or an amphitheater, um, the game room where games will happen and a foyer that connects all the rooms um, at the entrance. This is where you spawn as a spread, because it's it's like a game, you have a respawn point, right? Um, the doors technically are, because they're digital, you can put them anywhere and connect them anywhere. So I've sort of put the map um, in a layout that's like Pac-Man, where okay. if you go to the left, you'll end up on the right as well. So I, I forgot the shape, but um, Phil gave me that shape before. But it's, it's like that sort of cylinder. Um, the lounge space Mobius will be quite large, and it will also have a lot of space for people to just hang out. Like you don't just, you know, you don't need to just go in, look at the boots, and leave. So you can wander around, bump into people. You can join people in the lounge, and um, Gather has this feature called the private space. So I can denote a number of grids where if you're in that space, you can only hear each other if you're also within the same private space. And we can have like a hundred private spaces, right? So each, each booth will be a private space. That way people don't, um, I guess, get a lot of noise from others um, that's like close to them but aren't looking at the booth particularly. And then for the lounges, we can, we're going to have lounge space that's um, small and big and medium and all sizes so that people can go to groups where they're more comfortable by number of people. And then we'll also have like wide spaces where you, no one, absolutely no one can talk to you. So the idea of running into someone is actually quite possible in Gather. And we've tried it in the October event where, you know, I'm just trying to look around the tables to see if I got the item interactions right. And then someone will follow me and bump into me and then we'll be in the hall. So that's that's um that's something that was really nostalgic after attending some online events. So that aspect of random interaction is there on Gather. Amazing. So while Rachel is busy with Gather and the map, uh, what are you doing since uh, lately uh, ahead of uh, Session Zero Con? <laughs> Preparing a game or organizing more stuff? Uh well whenever some we never whenever we have to post something new for like reminders, uh because like the registration for for session zero for example came in bursts. We first had the game designers register, um so that we could give the most slots to them because of course the event really is for them. Um and then after that we opened it to artists and merchants, and then um eventually we opened it to to the public for like general registration but beyond that i'm also helping to organize um panels and talks um which finally everybody has a, a time slot oh my gosh <laughs> i've been trying to pull people together to kind of like um organize talks for um i guess because usually uh gng events have panels and talks for whoever's interested to 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 host them 
And um, this time, what we're having is we're having um, a panel about talking about contexts in uh, the in their um, tabletop role playing scenes in their respective countries. So that's interesting. Um, we also have another one where um, uh, language in tabletop uh, RPGs. Um, and then we have uh, like how you've ha like we have two um, merchants um, talking about how they made a business out of the hobby. And yeah, so it's very it's it's been like nerve wracking sometimes because nobody replies at the same time, right? And you kind of have to chase everybody down. <laughs> And of course, like I can't expect everybody to always reply immediately because we're all busy during the lockdown. Everybody has like, you know, things going on, but like, you know, you have to be able to confirm stuff. But like finally we have time slots. Um I from what I understand, Rachel is gonna have like a part of the map, which is a bit like an auditorium of some sort, where they will get to kind of just sit there or go uh, make their sprites go there and you can just watch the stream of the panels as they go. Uh, yep. The panels will start from the moment that the event starts and then they'll run for about an hour and 30 minutes and then like a break in between and then etc. all throughout the event. So that's mostly what I've been um, dealing with. I managed to finish a game really early that I'm going to be showcasing for session zero, so I'm good. <laughs> I don't, I don't have to. I fulfilled my promise to not cram this time. So I'm good. Oh, God. 2019 cramming was something else. Yeah, it was crazy. We were, we were printing on the day of the event. <laughs> and stapling during the event. It was crazy. The cramming was crazy. But now like, I have done good. I am a good, I am a good designer. <laughs> Well, at least it's in PDF. So unless you you're exporting your PDF from uh, InDesign, uh, it's uh, you don't have to staple it. That's the uh, the advantage of digital. Will yes. <laughs> will those panels be available also on Twitch or strictly via Gather? Where can people can watch them? And can they can there also be... be? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Sorry, they will be on Twitch. Um, Gather has a tool where it integrates with Twitch, so that people inside Gather can watch a stream. So that's the plan we have, um, but it, the 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 talks themselves will be on Twitch, and then yeah. people outside can also, I guess, um, watch it there. if they follow the channel that we haven't yeah. decided yet what the channel name will be. <laughs> Soon. <laughs> Soon. <laughs> but it's really. That's not... I think... It's more of a. It's more of just like a repository channel, I guess. I think. If ever we decide on making it something else, we'll make it something else. But for now, it's the the biggest advantage is that it can be like an auditorium type of style thing in and gather. So yeah, cool. We do facilitate um, cinema watching in gather, so that's cool. So if you yeah. want the live stream or show, that's something that can happen there. Yeah. Oh. This I see so much potential about it. It's not it's not an episode about gather, so we're gonna discuss other things. But just <laughs> Rachel, I need to get in touch with you uh after session zero sure. uh con because uh I'd like to try to organize a series of uh seminars and Q and A's uh between different online conventions to to share the experiences because I've been to several and each of them had a, at least one thing they did very well, and most of the the rest of the stuff were not so great. But uh, what I found frustrating was that online convention didn't have uh, uh, an opportunity to to get in touch with each other and exchange their experience. So uh, I'd like to to try to make that happen. So you will be there hopefully okay. to talk about gather for an hour. So <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Perfect. I will. I will join you in all of these efforts. So we've got uh, panels, we've got gather, uh, uh, booths with artists and sellers, vendors, uh, games. What what can people expect in terms of uh, games to join? Are, are there still room to join games? Because I joined one already, but th those yes. spots went quite fast. I don't know what's There's the status still now. Slots, I think. There is still one, two, three, four. There's still about available. 10 games with slots. 
Yeah. Maybe like two to four each. Um, we had 36 games to begin with. Um, right now, two cancelled. So we're at 34, but I know two will be added. So we'll be back to 36. It's um, coincidentally the most number of games we've had in any event. Who knew yeah. that like <laughs> being online actually makes it so easy to expand your event, right? So that's that is actually something that I've noticed with online where before we would be constrained by the physical space and the number of tables you can fit in that space. Now I can just be like, I'll put any number of tables I want. <laughs> so it's been good. But we have 36 games and you can also attend without playing a game. Or if yeah. you attend and you decide you like one of the games you see, you can also just run an impromptu game of your own. So there will be space you can just grab a, a couch or you can grab a table and declare to people, do you want a game with me? Let's play something. So that, that's possible. I'm very tempted to offer to run my own game this way uh, it's because it's, it's just two hours long. And you know, at convention online, I've been, that was difficult to do a impromptu games like that. So, so again, uh, that should be quite cool. All the games which are on offer, those 36 games, they all from designers from... Uh, Southeast Asia or specifically the the Philippines? Um, they're all they're all the they're all games by the attending designers. So yeah. for our attending designers, majority are Southeast Asian, but we do have a lot of um, Asian and Asian diaspora um, attendees. So we have someone from Korea, from Taiwan. Um, we have people from Hong Kong as well, and then we have the Phil Ams. Then we have the Chinese Americans and everyone and the so it's it's a it's surprisingly a so very diverse it's a good amount. Mix. Like yeah. it's it's a diverse mix of exhibitors. So like as expected, we do have a lot of Filipinos in the event, but we do have a lot of you know everyone else and majority of the games, um, like because I do keep track of what my friends and the designers in the Philippines produce. So a lot of these games I have never seen before. So it's it's really exciting. Like I wish I could play them like on the event itself, but unfortunately I have to play IT. <laughs> so I'll just have to watch. But that's why we need to to share your experience with all other online conventions so you can enjoy the, the convention in the, the best that's conditions. True, right? Why yeah. not being uh, in charge of IT? So that would be perfect. <laughs> uh, you know, it's it's really fascinating. First of all, uh, I don't think I've been the only one noticing the the growing online visibility of RPGC and uh, designers from the Philippines on platforms like, like Twitter. Uh, I think for people who are curious about what's going on in other countries, is it's very refreshing because it the world is very big, but when you get on Twitter, it's very difficult to to have a view of this, everyone is not as visible or they are in their own language. Uh, the Philippines got this, uh, if I understand correctly, situation where you use English uh, as a platform for, for a lot of, of different uh, cultures we, who have different uh, languages. But at the beginning you said, oh, we don't know if we'll have enough designers for a convention. And I was wondering, oh, hold on a minute. What is the demographics like of the, the Philippines in terms of just raw numbers? And I, I just had a quick look because I was thinking, okay, uh, I went, my favorite online convention is a French one. There had a bit of people from Canada, which, but it was mostly people from France, maybe a bit Belgium and Switzerland, but, but that's it. And that's, that's 66 million people, France. Uh, the UK is the same, apparently. And I was checking the Philippines, it's 106 million people. And for our U.S. Uh, viewers, uh, the U.S. is 300 million. Uh, so, 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 Philippines is like a third of the the U.S. and it's like not quite, but almost uh, double the size in population than than France and uh, and the U.K. and that's very exciting to think about that many people, of course, not all of them, <laughs> or, or, I mean, although I would wish for that to happen, uh, to, to see such a large demographic engage in role-playing games. So, so um, the, the thing that we really was able to capitalize on when it came to like running events for the hobby is that 20% of the population of the Philippines 
in some way, form, or another revolve around the capital. Oh, Sin disappeared. Oh, there, Sin is back. So, so there are a lot of people in the hobby in this really one small pocket of land in Luzon, in, in Manila generally. Oh, that's so, great, yeah. So that enabled us to, I suppose, gather people in, in the event when we were doing it physically. We did have some designers fly in from Iloilo, and we were hoping that um, some designers from Davao, which is like a city further down in the south, would be able to appear. But, but um, like about 95% of our attendees and our um, exhibitors were from Manila. So, so that also translates to, I guess, a colorful RPG life when it comes to being able to, um, I wouldn't say consolidate community because even within the hobby itself, we have many different communities. So typically the, the communities go by like their very specific locales, for example, and a lot of people are online and so on and so forth. But yes, I would say that there are a lot of us here. Um, how would I describe it? But it's just that no one really has the same interest, you know? <laughs> yeah, of course. So, yeah. But, but um, it's been heartening to notice that there has been an uptick of people supporting local creators and more local creators in general. So um, that's been good because I thought maybe if we were to do session zero again, like the second time, what if the designers we get are the same faces as the first one, but that's not the case. So even now there are designers that joined us from the Philippines that I've never met before. So it's good. There's always someone new, right? And there's a lot of young people, there's a lot of not so young people, but they're still like really cool and everything. So it's 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 great. I've been enjoying meeting people in the community. Sin, you want to comment on that? <coughs> uh, what was the question? Sorry, I think I disappeared. <laughs> it was just in, in general. Uh, we were. Re uh, I mentioned the demographics of the Philippines. That there's a lot of people uh -huh. in the Philippines, twice as much as they are in the UK or, or France. Uh, and, and now Rachel uh, was pointing out that uh, a lot of the people who attended your events were concentrated in Manila. I think uh, it's disappearing. Oh no. <laughs> Hello? Uh, yes? Yeah, Is yeah. Back? Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm back. Okay, okay, okay. So, yeah, uh, oh, yeah, Rachel was saying that a lot of the, the, the people in your community are in Manila. Uh, again, I was looking at the number 13 million people, apparently, 14. Uh, in Manila, uh, 9 million people in London, for people to, uh, to have kind of a, a comparison. Uh, I guess it's a growing community. You, what you, it's only the second edition, so you, not only you see new people, but you will inspire year after year more people to join. So that's, that's very exciting. And uh, yeah, it's not really a question. It's more ramblings. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, uh, I'm actually... Uh, I'm actually from the, one of the provinces in the Philippines. I'm from uh, the, the Visayas region, so um, uh, that's that's like one thing that is uh, kind of has always been part of my, um, I guess, identity when it comes to like game design. Uh, my latest release, for example, Lutong Banwa. I wrote it for, or rather, yeah, I wrote it first entirely in Hiligaynon, which is my mother tongue. Um, and from what I know, I've not seen a game actually yet written entirely in Hiligaynon. So that's like, that's like, yay, I did something. But um, when it comes to over there um, in that area, in that region of the Philippines, I do know that I do know a few friends who play and um but they're all mostly i guess clusters uh of people playing on their own they don't quite create like a community of some sort so it was i guess natural for me to eventually um move towards the communities in manila uh well for one i live here and like two uh you know like home games are hard to participate in when i'm not physically there as for um, I was actually quite happy 
that to know that um <clears throat> uh, RPGC and like the the scene in general is picking up a lot of traction because uh it's nice for people to take notice of us over here because sometimes we're really early on in my design it really felt like screaming into the void <laughs> sometimes <laughs> like ha ah, please notice me <laughs> um because um well you know when you start out especially twitter when your following is not that high yet like the algorithm doesn't like you so um it takes a lot of building over the months and the years to try to um i guess get people to listen to you and now that people are listening to rpgc it's quite nice because it's not just me it's um a lot of other people it's um it's an entire region of like people who are also very you know ecstatic about their design and want to improve and expand and be noticed so uh yeah that's that's mostly my thoughts on it um to have an event exclusively for not exclusively but like you know uh geared towards uh rpgc asia and um diaspora communities is for me um a very important step and also i guess highlighting the the kind of talent and the work that comes from our region since we know that majority of the scene is still very uh i guess white leaning <laughs> um West. so western, western there you go yeah us also so you, you know you, you go into circles <laughs> because for you it's mostly white <laughs> yeah. then it's mostly western and for me who's not from the us it's mostly us uh so i'm i'm part of a uh, a majority but at the same time i'm part of a mi minority which minority yeah. which has privileges which others don't have but still still under the uh powerful shadow of uh or us uh friends and corporations which are not as fr as friendly yeah so it's quite nice to have other voices also mix in that perspective and to also see what are the i guess uh design inclinations of others within our region within our area because uh i feel that that is a good way to learn like i personally whenever i whenever i want to learn how to design a new thing or or something like that i try to really kind of peek into what people are are designing um in terms of themes and in terms of i guess cuz sometimes people have fixations when it comes to like you know whatever they're designing during like uh, for like a month like everybody's into this sort of thing right now and then this and that's it and so it's nice to kind of like uh see what everybody's kind of like fixating on and like what everybody's into at the moment um but apart from that also i like to look into topics and themes for games that are not often i guess looked into um or are 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 done but um like the process isn't talked about does that make sense yes. like nobody ever nobody ever talked to me about how to make system agnostic stuff <laughs> so when i first tried to do system agnox agnostic stuff i was like i don't how <laughs> do i try to do anything um so it's that it's so knowledge it's, right yeah 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 it's it's, it's really knowledge that people are picking up on that's that's really my my big thing when it comes to community i get to learn so much and i enjoy it because uh the the topics and the the themes sometimes are so like whoa how do you think about that like it's so cool so i like i like to kind of learn and kind of pick at people's brains sometimes <laughs> so that's, community that's good for that sort of thing community learning a project design doesn't that all lead to our shores? Can you tell us a bit uh, oh. about that? Um, speaking of that, actually, <laughs> yes, our shores. Uh, <laughs> our shores is a Kickstarter coming this month, um, and um, 
I'll give you a rough estimate of when this month it's towards the middle of this month. So we're getting there. Um, it is a collaborative project um, of sorts where it is a Kickstarter uh, that aims to fund uh, three big projects from RPGC or from designers rather from RPGC. Uh, the one that I am on and that um, Pamu or the Dovetailer is also on is Navatham's End. And then we have Maharlika by uh, Joaquin Saavedra. And then we have Capitalites by Samui. So that's those are the three big things. But as part of our stretch goals, we also we're creating a mini zine, uh, which is a collaborative zine as well from other creators uh, in RPGC. And it can be anything that they want. It can be like a mini adventure. It can be a anything basically uh, under the sun, I guess. Uh, and the main point I think of our shores is really to um, give us tools that we otherwise would not have access to. Uh, I don't know how many times this has been talked about in the digital space, but uh, the Philippines does not have access to Kickstarter, so we cannot actually do Kickstarter ourselves. We need to have somebody else help us. So Sandy Pug Games has offered to help us um, launch the project. And we are very grateful for that. Uh, so it's very exciting. Uh, we're, I'm currently putting together the, the Kickstarter preview document for Navatem's End because as of last month, the, the full mechanics of the game finally finished. So I'm ecstatic. Uh, for Capitalites, I saw some new art come in for like characters in the game. So that's very exciting. Also very lovely characters. Very nice art. And for Maharlika, well, the, Maharlika has Geo Manning, who is like, when it comes to designing mechs, it's amazing. Uh, we have seen this and, stuff. It's very good. Right, right? Yeah, so we are we really hope to elevate these projects and to give them that kind of uh, uh, good, like, good quality that we wish other projects can have because I am hoping that this won't be the only iteration of our shores. Um, we're hoping to kind of see how this model works. If it works out, um, perhaps we can do this in the future also for other creators and for even more. Like maybe it won't just be three big projects. Maybe it can be bigger. It depends on, I guess, the reception when it launches and whether it funds or not, how far into the stretch goes we can get. And then we can see how this works for not just RPGC, but like for other groups in the future. Um, but yeah, that's that's the entire spiel, I guess, of <laughs> our shores. So please support of, us. Would that mean that other groups? Yeah, sorry, the, sorry. That means the our shore, the Kickstarter will be live during session zero con then. Yes. Oh, so yes. Uh, we are actually participating in <laughs> session zero. Also, our shores is also signed up for a booth there, so you can come sure. check out the stuff. Uh, for yeah, I think we are under Sandy Pug. Oh, under okay, okay. Yeah, Sandy under Pug. Sandy, Pug. Sandy Yeah, Sandy Pug is is gonna be, um, I I guess like front loading. You need you need a, a booth with a big banner <laughs> and a and a live counter <laughs> and fireworks when you you reach a goal during the event. Yes. Uh, and uh, We're so excited! You can yeah. dance with your like, sprites. That's uh, that's one of the things that I wanted to do for session zero of the event. Because a lot yeah. of our designers are actually various starters um, as stretch goals, as layout artists, as whatever, a, a writer, and all of these things. So I wanted to consolidate any and all active Kickstarter campaigns that is happening during session zero. So wow. that when you walk along a wall, you'll see what starters you can do, do to support these hmm. people. So we'll see if that can work out. But I hope so. I think it might. We'll, we'll find a way. <laughs> I want to record a. No, it makes me want to. Uh, right now, I'm releasing a couple episodes I recorded at an online convention. No, I want my little sprite to have a little microphone and I will go around the convention and <laughs> interview people this way. You can. 
Well, I'm not sure about sprites because the sprites are made by Gather itself. But you can go around and interviewing people if you want. You can stream during the convention if you want. Yep. You are free to do so. That's fine. Oh, cool. Yep. Cool, cool, So we, cool. We'll, have a, we'll have a very small safety tool where if people have like a no on their name, then they'll put their videos up online. But otherwise, everyone's good. Okay. So. Amazing. Uh, you wanted to talk about other organizations or was it about the, the Kickstarters, uh, Rachel? In our in in session zero, because we had some extra tables, like not a lot, like maybe like five or six or so. So we extended um, attendance to RPG Latam, so Latin America, and we do have a couple of designers from there who oh, decided cool. they wanted to boost with us. So we'll have some Latam um, designers as well. Mm -hmm. So they also have a, a hashtag RPG L A T A M. So yes. Apparently, I'm 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 in part to blame for the RPG that I'm uh, hashtag because <laughs> really? uh, I invited Diogo to create one during our panel at Metatopia about language. Oh. So I'm gonna take well, credit awesome. for that. I did nothing, but oh, I'm gonna so take cool. credit. <laughs> you should take credit. <laughs> but they they seem like really like I looked at the hashtag. They have some really nice stuff. Like the art yes. is great. Three cool the design am... points that they were taking. It's so cool. So I'm, currently, it's so nice. I'm currently following uh, a map maker and I'm just drooling over their maps. Oh my gosh. When I get a little bit more like money, I'm probably going to pour some money into their Patreon. Like the map packs are amazing. It's so pretty. Uh, and we um, will be there. It, yes. It's quite nice to actually just go through the hashtag. They just kind of see what's there because they're also very nice people and very enthusiastic that they finally have like something to like you know um come around with and like bring together like i think i remember it feels the same as when i first discovered the hashtag rpgc and all i wanted to do was like tag every single post of mine with rpgc <laughs> <laughs> Like yeah, I, I yeah. don't do it so much because I don't game design it. Like I don't think I people will be interested if I say, "Hey, I drew a potato today." But um, <laughs> otherwise, you know, I might just go through the the lap, um ha hashtag and invite all of them in one minute. So we'll see yeah, if they have fun for it. But they're, they're quite fun. They're 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 nice to to look at. Yeah. It's great. We got RPGC. We got RPG Latam. Hopefully, we'll have others. We which will. Uh, it would be nice to have some from uh, from Africa or the regions of uh, Asia that, that would be awesome to have such hashtags. Because, you know, it's a, it's a ride full circles because you see one another, you're inspired to do so. But even individuals like me who are not part of that but are into it, it makes it so much easier to find. So if you have an interest, suddenly it becomes much easier to access. And for me who yeah. record a podcast, I know now that if I need someone for a project and I want specifically someone from Latin America or Southeast Asia, I can use those hashtags as a starting point to, to find them. So that's uh, that's rather cool. We we're getting close to the one hour mark when I need to wake up my son, otherwise he won't be sleeping tonight. He's, he's, in, a, he's in his push chair just in the corridor. Oh, I, I can hear him ruffling. So is there anything <laughs> left? you want to to mention to talk about and uh yeah uh sin and rachel um so if you want to register for session zero our website is session zero con.com okay. um, just continue don't pay attention i'm gonna go <laughs> fetch my son because it... <laughs> but yeah um it's don't stop good. Just uh, currently we're at the including the exhibitors we're at the couple of hundred of them mm -hmm. already said so it's, it's quite big and we've only marketed like once or twice right we so still have exciting. the whole month to go so it's quite yes. exciting uh, i wonder if i'll have update. to go together and ask for more can I have more users uh, yeah i guess so we can expand that huh if if they if they respond and like if we say get yes. more registrants then we can expand our user yeah 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 server. Uh, for for updates on the con, um, for anybody who isn't following it yet, you can actually go follow uh, GNG on Twitter at GNG Meets. Um, it's that simple. You 
we we post primarily on there. If you have a Facebook, there's it's Gamers and GMs Philippines also. Um, we also have like an event page on there where we post stuff. We have a new banner, so it's really cute by <laughs> Stacy. <laughs> I love Stacy's art. <laughs> it's really yeah. cute, yeah. It, it's really nice. Yes. Great. I will include a link to mostly, all of that in the description of the episode. So if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, if you're listening to that on my podcast feed, it might be too late because usually it takes a month before it's released there. But uh, I mean, you can still go and follow all those uh, awesome uh, content creators and communities and probably catch up with uh, uh, videos uh, and so on. So go check the, the description and follow us on Twitch if you're new. Uh, subscribe on YouTube. All these things. I'm terrible about all of that. Uh, comment, share, uh, do <laughs> do all of this. And uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, Rachel and Sin, what what are your your goodbyes? And where can people find you if you wish to be found? Oh, I have a very boring Twitter but I am on <laughs> Potato Dialogues on Twitter. And everywhere else is like Rachel Dang. So on, you have on this a blog. Part, you might be in the same servers. Potato Dialogues on Dreamworth is my blog, but I haven't updated it recently. <laughs> um, mostly, I really just do work for GNG Meets or play my own games um, and support these guys because they're, they're really awesome. And I hope that they become really successful in the industry. Um. Ooh. Thank you so much for watching the stream. Um, I am Diwata Manila on Twitter. Uh, you can find me also on Patreon at patreon.com slash Diwata MNL. Support me for as low as uh, $3 a month. Uh, there's also my, what else do I have? Uh, Diwata MNL.itch.io <laughs> for all of my games. And um, I will have some exclusive stuff at, at session zero which will not be available on my itch yet, but it will be available through uh, the website that I will be making for the rest of the month before the event. But anyway, <laughs> um, please support our shores when it comes to, when, when it comes up and um, please follow uh, everybody from RPGC. You're gonna have a good time seeing at, seeing all of our tweets. So there's that. Uh, support our shores. Support session zero. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I cannot wait to. Thank you for having us, Callum. Oh, it's it's my We're still open my to pleasure. Source. <laughs> uh, I don't remember. Let me check who's gonna be next. So because next Monday we're back with session zero. We got another designer from uh from session zero. Who was that person? Uh, we got we're gonna have five episodes about session zero. And the I next think. one is yeah. Sora, I think, right? It's I think it's Aki. 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 Yeah, Aki yeah. On January eleventh. <laughs> so yeah, it's Sora Aki now. Come check us out. Uh, and thanks to Isaac, the keeper who's in, who was in the chat room, who is very excited and really looking forward to session zero and uh, really enjoyed our stream. So thank Isaac. you so much for being there. Cheers, everyone. Bye. Take care. Stay safe and uh, see you online at Thank Session you. Zero Con. Bye bye.